Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use perspective with transform options to design 3D photo walls in Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so before we get started, the images I'm going to use throughout this tutorial are from the Travel Agency Layout Pack. It's free, so go ahead and download those images if you want to follow along. And also, if you want to download this layout, uh, you can also go to the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below, so that you can just install it on your website. All right, so we're going to start off by building a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to Pages, click on Add New. Next, we're going to give our page a name. So I'm going to call this Perspective with Transform Options. Click on Use Divi Builder, and then Build from Scratch. So first of all, I'm going to uh, choose my layout here. So I'm going to go with four equal columns. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. Right, so let's start adding our images. So I'm going to search for my image module, select it. And then I'm going to click anywhere here on my image. And then I'm going to start searching for my images. And the sizes of the images are 600 by 800 pixels. Okay, so I'm going to start by adding my first image. So I'm going to go ahead and select it, click upload an image. And then I'm going to continue and add all my images until I'm happy with that. So next here, I'm just going to duplicate this a few times. Just drag this into position. And then I'm going to go in and change the actual image. Okay, now I can go in, click here anywhere on this image. And then I'm going to replace that with my images that I need for my design. So I'm going to go with this one here, upload an image. So go ahead, replace these other images. Now that I've updated my images, the next thing we need to do is to go in and add custom padding to our image. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, click on design, spacing. So here we're going to add 3%. So this 3% needs to be added to top, bottom, left, and right. So I'm going to add it here as well, activate my chain so it can be added both to the top and the bottom. Now to save us from doing this each and every time, all I have to do now is to just copy my settings here. I'm going to save this and then I'm just going to paste my padding here. Now my padding has been applied to the rest of the images by copying and pasting. Right, so the next thing we need to do is to duplicate these images because we need to have two more rows. So you can just go ahead and just do it that way, like this, duplicate them, and then go to the second one, the second uh, row here, and also duplicate them. Now, once you've done this, the next stage now is to go in and change these images because we want to add a bit of variety here. We don't want these images to look the same. So go ahead, change these images by clicking here on this gear icon, clicking on the image, and then going to your library, and then updating those images. Now that I've added all my images, it's time now to go into the section settings to make some customizations there. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon on my section settings. So the first thing I'm going to do is to add a background color. So I'm going to click here on background, click this plus button and add black as my background color. Next, I'm going to go into my custom padding. So I'm going to click here on design, spacing. So here we need to add zero pixels to the top and the bottom. Now, to add perspective properly, we need to also add a CSS style. So I'm going to come over here to Advanced, Custom CSS, and then on the main element, I'm just going to paste this CSS code. Now, if you want to use the exact same CSS code, you can go to the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. Next, we need to also adjust the horizontal and vertical overflow. So I'm going to come over here to Visibility. So by default, it's set to default. So I'm going to click down on this drop down and set it to hidden. And then we also need to do the same for vertical. So I'm going to select hidden as well. And then we're going to save. Next, we're going to go into the row settings as well to make some changes there. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, click on design. So the first thing we're going to do is to adjust the gutter width. Now the gutter width is the distance between these columns. So we need to adjust that. So I'm going to activate here to use gutter width and we're going to reduce this or bring it down to one. So that means the space here is very, very small between the images. Next, I'm gonna come over here to my width and set this to 300 pixels. So I'm gonna save this for now. So pretty much this is what we have so far. Now we need to add our perspective. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go back again in my row settings, click on design, transform. So I'm gonna start with this one here, which is the transform rotate. 
So over here, we're going to start off with minus 58 and notice that perspective that we've just added to our design. Next, we're going to come over here to transform origin. So here we can also bring this to the bottom, just like that, and notice what happens here in my design. So now you can also adjust this by playing around with the sizes over here. So this you can bring it down to, let's say, 100%. Right, so the next thing we're going to do now is to go in and add our CSS to the actual columns. So I'm going to come back over here to content. And then I'm going to go into the settings of my first column here. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, click on advanced, custom CSS, and on the main element, I'm going to paste my CSS code. So go ahead and add the CSS code to the rest of the columns. Okay, so I've added my CSS code. So the next stage now is to add my heading. So I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to come over here and click this plus button to add my section. So this is going to be a regular section with a single column. So before we even add our module, the first thing we're going to do is to add black to our section background. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to come over here, click on background, and I'm going to click this plus button and select black. Now, as we did before, we're also going to add our perspective via CSS. So I'm going to click here on advanced, custom CSS, and in the main element, I'm going to add my perspective and save. Next, I'm going to come over here now to my rows. Click on this plus button and add a text module. Because this is where we need to add our heading. So I'm going to select this. So here we need to replace this text with the word photography. Now let's go ahead and stylize this text. So I'm going to click here on design, text. So the first thing we're going to do is to change our font. So I'm going to click here on this drop down and search for my Google font and making sure it's all caps. We're going to center it and change the color to white because right now, as we can see, it's not very easy to read. So I'm going to change my text color to white and my size as well needs to be increased to 5VW. And then I'm also going to add some letter spacing. So I'm going to set this to 6 and a line height of 1EM. Okay, so that's looking good. Now it's time to add transform rotation to the text module. So I'm just going to scroll down here until I go to transform. I'm going to choose transform rotate. So here I'm going to add 32 degrees. And then over here on the right, I'm going to add minus 12 deg degrees. So pretty much this is all we need to do. I'm going to go ahead and save. Now we need to add the, the bottom part of our design. So to make things easier for us, we're just going to duplicate this and drag it to the bottom. Next, we need to go into the row settings and reverse this design. So to do that, I'm just going to come over here and make sure I select my row settings. Now, if it's quite difficult to select your row settings, what you could also do here is to go into your wireframe mode. And as you can see, this is much easier to do it. So I'm going to click here on my row settings, design, transform, rotate. So here I can now switch to my desktop view. So I'm going to click here on transform, rotate, change my settings. So this one here, instead of being minus 58, we're going to set it to 58 degrees. And then over here on, trans on transform origin, we're going to say top center. So now you can see here that we have a beautiful perspective design. And then we can just save. For the next design, we are going to create 3D photo walls on the left and the right side of our heading instead of top and bottom. So to do this, we're going to jumpstart the design process by duplicating these designs that we've already done. So again, I'm just going to switch back over here to my wireframe view because it's easy for me to see where things are. So what I need to do here is to duplicate this like that. I'm just going to collapse that. Next, we're going to go and open the row settings. So I'm going to click here and switch over to my desktop view. I'm going to click here on design because we're going to reset our transform styles. So I'm going to click here on transform. And then I'm just going to right click and reset transform scale, just like that. So next, we're going to duplicate this row. So I'm just going to save this. So here, I'm just going to click on the duplicate button. So now we have these two here, which are identical. So what we need to do next is to copy this row, which has this text. So we're not copying the section, we need the row. 
So I'm just going to come over here and hit Command C to copy or Control C if you're on a PC and then back over here. I'm just going to paste it. Okay, so there we go. I have my text now added between my two rows. Now for our images or for our image walls to be on the left and the right side of our design, we need to also add some CSS code to our design. So let's go ahead and do that. So I need to go into my section settings here, click on advanced, custom CSS, and we're going to replace this with this perspective. So as you can see here, now we have our design on the sides. Now, if you want to make this wall higher, you can also add more images or just duplicate a layer here just to make the walls a bit higher. So I'm going to save this and go ahead and do that. So as you can see here, it's much easier to do it in the wireframe mode. So I'm going to switch back over here to the wireframe mode. And then I'm just going to duplicate these just like that. Do the same here on the top. Now, if I switch to my desktop view, you'll notice that my walls are now a bit taller. So the next stage now is to go in and change my row settings. So I'm going to come over here to my row settings, click on design sizing. So the first thing we're going to do is to change our width to 100%. And over here on the maximum width, we need to set it to 100% as well. Great. So this needs to be applied over here to the right as well. So I'm just going to save this, go into my row settings for the other side, click on design sizing, set this to 100%, maximum width 100% as well. Now it's time to transform rotate. So I'm going to start by serving, saving here and then going into my row settings. So we're going to start with the left side, click on design, transform, and then I'm going to come over here to transform rotate, set, set it here to 90 degrees. We're going to save it. And then over here on the right, we're going to set this to minus 90 degrees. So as we did before, we're going to click here on design, transform, transform, rotate, and then I'm going to set it to minus 90 degrees. So pretty much this is our final design. I'm going to go ahead now and save, and then I'm going to publish the page. Now let's take, what it, let's take a look at the final design. Now with this design, you can also add a bit more creativity by adding hover effects or background images. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching. and I'll see you in the next video.